So now let's talk about skepticism. Skepticism is this idea that you know humans really can't know truth. So one early skeptic is Montaigne. He's a French writer. He basically is an early essayist. He's given credit for perfecting the essay, so you have him to give credit to. We'll see you later. And um, Montaigne's most famous essay is called Of Cannibals. And in this essay, he basically writes that, how do we know what's good and bad? The Europeans encountered cannibals in, in some areas in the New World. And they were saying, oh, that's bad, that's sinful, you're eating other people. But Montaigne says, how do we know that's good or bad? After it all, that's just what they do. We do all sorts of things ourselves that we do. And so how do we actually know what's good or bad? And everything, therefore, is just cultural things, that, you know, cultural practice. And so this is the beginning of a cultural relativism, this idea that certain things are applied to certain cultures that don't apply to others. Okay, cultural relativism. You know, this is the idea we see this today, where it's like, well, uh, you know, People in the West like to have freedom and all this stuff, but you know maybe uh, you know in these other areas it's just their culture is different. Their culture is more communal, and so that explains why they don't need elections and don't want elections, uh, and therefore we shouldn't try to push our culture onto them. Okay, so the cultural relativism is still a discussion today, right? This is like you know we we have this all the time, even even less even less. Um, opinionated or a controversial would be something as simple as you know this culture over here they uh, you know have all sorts of celebrations for young girls when they turn 16 and so they emphasize that and that's a big coming of age thing whereas this culture over here doesn't right so they don't have quinceañeras or whatnot so which one's right or wrong cultural relative we don't really know right it's sort of just based on one's culture um, and so that's the toler you know, tolerance is, is sort of based on a cultural relativism. Your thing over there, that works for you. That thing over there works for him. And so can't we all just get along uh, with our different ideas? Okay. Moving on. Pierre Bale um, is also a skeptic. And Pierre Bale is sort of right before the Enlightenment. And he writes, he basically critiques all of these superstitions that people have. So, in his historical and critical dictionary, he compiles all of these beliefs that people have about what they need to eat to, uh, you know, have children, or you know, how to stay safe and healthy, and to cure a disease, how they need to do this, and to, uh, you know, avoid. Uh, you know, a bad whatever, they need to not see black cats, right? Or, you know, you knock on wood to, you know, get rid of bad, you know, omens or, or you know, all of these things. And Pierre Bale basically says, look at how gullible humans are, right? Humans are just really gullible. We believe stuff without empirical evidence. Okay, without actual evidence, we'll believe it. And you still see this, right? It's like, wait, is the world really going to end in 2012? Right? I think it is, Mr. Lord. Everyone does the knock on wood thing. The knock on wood thing, you right? You did it this morning. It's like, I did. I did. <laughs> to prevent nuclear war. To prevent nuclear war. Yeah. All right, we have to play it safe. Or yeah. <laughs> black cats, right? It's Stuff like that. In his thoughts on a comment, Bale continues this idea. He's basically writing about a comet that's coming around. And comets are something that appear every, you know, on some schedule. or They kind of appear out of the sky and float around for a while. And they're not like anything else that, like, comes on a rotation. And so there's all sorts of superstitions about what these comets, comets might mean. Omens, bad luck, you know. Today, a couple of years ago, there was a cult that killed themselves because they thought aliens were coming and they joined them on the oh, comet. Yeah. So... And basically, once again, 
Bale writes that, you know, look at humans, look at what we believe, and why do we believe these things? There's no reason to believe them. Yeah. Um, so in his thoughts of comment, he writes about superstitions and about what they're common. Exactly. Like, he denounce he's denouncing them. He's denouncing so he them. Like and he's writing about how man has this proclivity for making things up and for believing irrational things. He's, he's commenting on it. Now, Fail also when it comes to religion, just to tie in, to understand how this, how all this affects, go, you know, sort of ideas about how humans view themselves and their place in the world. Bale views, when it comes to religion, he uh, wants religious toleration. Because religion is something that, likewise, cannot be proven. How do you know Calvin was right and not Luther? Or the Catholics are right and not Luther? Um, maybe we can't prove it. And so therefore, we should tolerate these different views um, and not, you know, kill people over them. And so he, and not ban people from thinking them. So he favors religious toleration in his life. Which gets, I mean, so we've been talking about throughout even this, all these things, the, the next point, the church and science, right? These scientific breakthroughs are going to challenge the church's authority when it comes to explaining the world. The church had adopted the Aristotelian and Ptolemaic views of science. And there's basic reasons for doing this. Um, a fundamental belief is that man is created in the image of God. That is a truth. So using deductive reasoning, we can deduce that man is important, therefore, of course, we're in the center of the universe. We were created in the image of God. Or another deduction we can do. Jesus is God who came to earth to save mankind. If Jesus is God, he's going to come, obviously then, to save humans. Humans are really important. And so we can deduce that humans must be the center of the universe because, you know, these, you know Jesus came to save us. So, the church's authority is going to be challenged. Now, um, what does this mean? Uh, well, there's going to be a lot of people favoring religious toleration and this new idea of deism. Now, one way that we see a change is when it comes to witchcraft. Um, actually, it's the scientific revolution kills witchcraft. It destroys it. And so that's actually a good effect. Um, actually, science in general is good effect. And so we get to like better ballistic missiles and things like that. <laughs> you know, guns. Yeah, it's all mixed, all mixed back. But um, so witchcraft is clearly good. Uh, basically, there is now ev there's demands for evidence. So you're making an assertion, you need evidence for it. And so therefore, uh, if you're making an assertion that someone put a potion in your soup and killed you, or, you know, um, injured you severely, okay. hurt your health, then, um, then obviously there's a problem. And so what we see is the last witchcraft uh, trials, the last person killed for witchcraft is in the early 1700s. Um, and so the 1500s and 1600s see a lot of witchcraft by the late 1600s, scientific breakthroughs, the demand for evidence means we see a reduction in witch killings. 